Well, thank you very much. Now, um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people, and pay respect to their elders past and present, and to pay respect to elders everywhere today, especially the female elders amongst us in our, in our society, in our community, as it is International Women's Day. And can I say how thrilled and delighted I am to be here to speak to you on this very auspicious occasion, speaking at International Women's Day to a group of young women of the future, young women, dynamic women leaders and achievers of the future. Now, I thought that I'd start with the context that Sarah actually um, was speaking to me about earlier before we walked in today. International Women's Day celebrations in the developed world always have to be seen very, very clearly in the context of the extraordinary disadvantage and our very, very low personal, um, personal, physical and economic security that women, a lot of women experience in the develop, developing world. And um, the United Nations um, uh, in, in Australia this year is concentrating particularly on Papua New Guinea. And I think um, as we reflect on the role of women in society in Australia, we need to remember that one of the UN programs, for example, that was uh, rolled out in conjunction with the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs and Trade was one where women working in the markets in Port Moresby were not safe enough to take their daily takings home with them. They were often bashed and robbed on the way home. So that the UN, together with the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, actually institutionalised a very small, low-tech, but much safer banking system so they could just go and deposit their daily revenue in, in a bank account so that it had some security. So they couldn't be bashed up on the way home and have their takings stolen or more, uh, or, or possibly had, had their takings you know, appropriated by the other people in their households, um, possibly through acts of violence. So we need to think about the important role that women need to play in ensuring the better security, safety and, um, and uh, well-being of women right around the world. But in the light of that, I thought I might like to share with you a couple of lessons that I've learnt from my own life, and my own experience. And looking back to roughly when I was your age in high school, the sort of um, lessons I think, I, I hope will be a little bit interesting to you today. Well, first of all, and I know this sounds very um, adult, grown-up-ish of me, but the, one of the most important things you can do now is study hard and get involved in your studies. But not only get involved in your studies, as important as they are, also get involved in the life of the school, whether through sport or music, drama, debating, all the other ways that you can get involved in the school. Um, I think that sometimes the out-of-school activities that you have in your memory, you know, decades and decades down the track when you're much older, are the ones that you actually keep with you in your heart and, and you know, take with you through life. So, please get involved in the life of the school as well as studying hard. Now, just I don't, want to, I don't want to diminish the importance of studying hard. If you give schoolwork your best effort, you will, re you, you will really be happy later on. And by the same token, if you don't give study your best effort, you will regret it later on. If you study hard and have more career options, you have many, many more alternatives about what you can do in the future. And I think one of the most important thing people can do is have the maximum amount of choices in their life. Everybody at this school, everybody in, you know, who are socially advantaged in Australia and right around the world have many more advantages and options and, and work to create uh, more options and more potential choices for you in your life. Secondly, I would say, never cease to have an open mind. Think of learning as something you don't just do at school, but it's something you will do for the rest of your life. And um, also be open to new op opportunities and avenues to explore and learn about. That's actually what's taken me to the town hall into the present uh, roles that I've had um, over the last 10 or 15 years of my life. When I was a girl of your age, it would never have occurred to me that I'd be the Lord Mayor or the Chief Commissioner of Sydney. But I tell you what took me there. A passion and an interest for, for design and architecture on the one hand, but also a, really, a very uh, real concern that I learned about when I was at school 
uh, working, uh, going and work, working with organisations that um, had wards of the state and meeting those wards of the state and understanding the very disadvantaged lives that they had. I knew that cities had strong pockets of advantage and disadvantage, which, which I kept with me in my mind and has, has informed the way I've lived my life on the one hand and had a very passionate interest, amateur interest in architecture and design. And eventually those, those areas of interest actually led me into um, city government. So I encourage you is always to be interested in, th to pursue the interests that you have. They may seem strange and bizarre to some of your girlfriends or, and you know, your family, but pursue those interests, assuming they're not dangerous interests, of course, and um, because those interests and those passions really will lead you through life. Now, the other thing I think, you know, cause, uh, is, is to try to enjoy yourself uh, with everything you do, even if it seems dull. Really throw yourself into life. That's a, I think that's one of the most important things. Even if you're given boring things to do, like for example, clean up the playground if you haven't been very well behaved, or, or, or uh, help your parents around the house, or keep your bedroom clean, throw yourself into the things that you are given to do with, with gusto and with enthusiasm because you can actually learn quite a lot by doing boring things if you have the right attitude to life. One of the things, a couple of the things I did when I was going through university um, was, um, was firstly to do waitressing. And you know, you would think that waitressing isn't really interesting, but I actually used um, my time waitressing is to observe and have a perspective on the people that I was helping and serving and, um, and you know, engaging with them. And often you have a lot to learn through just casual contact with other people. So throw yourself into everything, even if it looks really boring. Another thing I did was actually, um, um, I was given this job to do for, you know, in one of my university holidays was to go through every single piece of legislation, New South Wales government legislation and industrial awards to see if there were any examples of racial or um, gender-based discrimination. When I walked into the law library and saw all the, the books and the, you know, the, the legislation I'd have to read through, I nearly fainted, but I thought, no, I can do this, and I did it. And um, you know, I found some pretty extraordinary examples of discrimination back in the late 70s, one example of which in an industrial award said that women are not allowed to mix the minty's dough. I mean, can you imagine? Anyway, in the 1970s, there was a rule in the industrial, in the industrial laws which said that women are not allowed to mix the minty's dough. So it was great to find that ridiculous example of discrimination and to do something about it. So no matter how daunting and how dreary looking your task is, with the right attitude, you can find something interesting and rewarding to see in it. Um, now, so yeah, do be prepared to do unglamorous things. If you have the right mindset, they can become truly fascinating. Now, with your career, you have to work hard. That's obviously very important. But building social and community networks around you is just as important as well. Nobody achieves anything without being the member of a team. So team building and team spirit is very, very important. Sometimes just as important as your academic achievements is your, is your personality. And, and the strength of your character cannot be underestimated as a driver of your future achievement and success. For example, Everybody, I think, should strive to be resilient and to be able to persevere through times of difficulties. Everybody has bad experiences in life. The issue is, how do you respond and manage those experiences? Um, now, an extreme expression of that idea is, is the one that um, somebody told me once, it's what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now, that's a pretty extreme manifestation of it, but there's something, there's something, there's a grain of truth there, is there as there is in many, um, many aphorisms like that. So it's important to know and understand your talents and gifts. Now, I think one of the most important things of my life, which I had to really work on when I was younger, is to seek to have confidence in myself. Now, your friends and your family, of course, are the key people who will help you with that. Sometimes, if it, even if you don't feel confident, as I often didn't, don't worry. Just present a confident face to the world, even if you think you have to, you have to pretend. That's, that's what I did, and it's, and it's difficult. But after you do that for a while, it kind of starts to build upon itself, and you do become much more confident. One of the things I didn't have very much confidence about, actually, even into my 30s, was public speaking. That was a barrier I had to get over. 
you know, 15, 20 years ago, I would have died of, you know, nerves speaking to all you girls. So if I, I encourage you to pursue your confidence, don't have any barriers to, to uh, due, due to a lack of confidence that will hold you back in life. So always put your best foot forward. Um, now, I think another really important lesson for life is having respect in human relations. Respect everybody you come across, even little brothers and sisters, as annoying as they might be sometimes. Now, um, the Gen General Morrison, um, now Australian of the Year, uh, said the famous words, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. And he was saying that in the context of um, you know, brutality and harassment in the defence forces. And that, that was a very strong statement of intent and belief when he said that, because there, there have been you know, issues about bullying and harassment in the defence forces. But we should take that learning into our own lives. The standard we walk past is the standard we accept. So if you ever see examples of people victimising or bullying or harassing or being intolerant of people for their, for their personality, for their gender, for any reason, please take it seriously and try to stop that from happening. Now, I can't just say one of the most important decisions you'll make as well as your career and pursuing your careers will be the people you choose to spend the rest of your life, selecting the people you'd like to spend the rest of your life with and have children with. I think it's really important to make sure that the people, that person you choose actually has the same values you do as having respect to all others, particularly women. And so I would encourage you to uh, manifest that respect in your family relations, respect your parents, respect your sisters, respect your brothers, and encourage others to have that same character of respect. Because it is amazing how having a greater sense of respect across society will do a, will do a lot to um, address the damage and the, and, the, uh, and, the, and the harm that can come with a lack of respect and a lack of understanding. And, um, and I think that you should, you should encourage your brothers in particular, if they sometimes try to put you down, don't put up with it. Say to them the standard you walk past is the standard you respect and say if they are nice to women, if they respect women and, are, and treat them as equals, they've got a lot more chance of finding a nice person to marry like you girls are. So, you know, I think your brothers are very important people to work on. Thank you very much.